In this video, I'll be unboxing the Mass Airflow Meter Conversion Kit for the 8-valve naturally aspirated 944s by Lindsay Racing, and describing the differences between the MAF sensor and the factory airflow meter. I've been wanting to pick up one of these 944 MAF tune kits for a while now, so I'm pretty excited to check it out. Inside here is an aftermarket mass airflow meter that replaces the heavily restrictive OEM airflow meter or AFM that comes standard with these cars. There have been a few of these developed over the years. Uh, Vitesse Racing made some kits and there was one by Miller Performance that's no longer available. But this one is a variant of the version designed by Rogue Tuning about 10 years ago now. Since then, Rogue has passed it on to Lindsay Racing. They've made a few updates over time and it went out of production for a while, but it's back with a newly redesigned intake tube that looks really nice. From a technical perspective, the factory AFM uses a mechanical door attached to a variable resistor assembly that sends voltage signals to the DME computer where they're ultimately correlated to the volume of air flowing into the intake manifold. The MAF, on the other hand, places a heated wire into the airstream that is cooled by the volume of incoming air and that circuit works to maintain a constant temperature on the wire, so as airflow increases, current to the wire also increases, and that corresponding output voltage is sent to the DME computer to balance and deliver the correct fuel mass to the engine. In addition to the unrestricted airflow gained by the absence of moving parts, the MAF setup allows air temperature and pressure compensation to be automatically factored into the output signal. Because of these differences, MAF systems provide increased accuracy in air measurements and are generally more reliable over time. As we get into the kit here, we'll find a few different components included, the first of which is a new performance chip and chipboard set for the DME, which contains the timing mapping information or the tune for the new MAF sensor. While this 28-pin chip is a direct fit for the DMEs found in the 1988 and 89 model year 944s, the 24-pin DMEs found in years 85 and a half through 87 require a conversion to a 28-pin configuration, and there are some options and information on Lindsay Racing's website on how to get that done, one of which includes them performing the conversion for you for $50, which is nice. We'll also find in here a newly redesigned CNC machined intake tube made from 6061 T6 aluminum that has an anodized black finish for corrosion protection. This is the piece that replaces the existing airflow meter on the car, connecting the intake J-boot on one side of the system to the air filter housing on the other side, and it bolts right up to those factory components on the car. Connected to the intake tube is a plug-and-play wiring harness that adapts the factory AFM connector to the new MAF connector, and it's all pre-wired and nicely bundled up for a clean installation. And we can see the blade-style MAF element mounted inside the center of the intake tube, which is secured by two machine screws on the outside. The new wiring harness connector on the sensor side has a red locking tab that holds it in place and all you need to do is pull that piece back to release the connector and it's actually a lot easier to remove than the small metal spring clips on the factory connectors. There's also one 12 volt power wire that splits off and requires connection to the positive terminal on the ignition coil so that has to be run across the engine bay and connected up on the other side in order to power the MAF sensor. Overall it seems to be a really nice setup. Let's take a closer look at the new performance chip and chipboard assembly inside this little box here. Again, this chip needs to be installed in place of the factory chip on the circuit board inside the DME, which involves removing the DME from the car, carefully opening it up, and swapping out the chips. If you have a very early 944 between model years 1983 and 1985, the factory chips were soldered to the board, so in those cases, you'll need to first upgrade the DME to one from the 1985.5 refresh or later. For 1985.5 to 87, however, four additional chip socket pins can be soldered to the board, but provisions already exist there to accept the new hardware, so it's just a matter of converting it to accept the larger 28-pin chip. And finally, cars from 1988 and 89 are already set up for the 28-pin chips, so they can be replaced fairly easily, and once that's done, the DME will have all the tuning information it needs to optimize the air-fuel mixture for the engine. There are a number of problems that can develop with the factory AFMs as they age, one being that the mechanical parts tend to lose their calibration over time, and two, the conducting strips inside can wear out from the constant back-and-forth movement of the wiper arm, which then causes erratic voltage output to the DME. On top of all this, the mechanical flapper barn door that is almost completely closed off at low RPM conditions has to be physically pushed open by the intake airstream, which reduces the overall throttle response on the car. 
The MAF setup replaces the mechanical measurements of the AFM with a fully electronic version using a modern blade style sensor and with the AFM flapper out of the equation and the blade sensor now positioned in the center of a wide open intake tube, the engine can breathe more freely. So for those reasons, the MAF conversion is probably one of the best performance modifications you can get for the naturally aspirated 944s, and that's why I'm looking forward to getting it installed and testing it out. So there's a breakdown of the 944 MAF tune kit by Lindsay Racing, a brief overview of the installation process, and a summary of its differences from the factory AFM. This product has been dyno tested, and you'll typically see an increase of around 5-10% to 10 in both horsepower and torque across the entire RPM curve. So it looks like there's some good potential there to replace an aging technology on the car while improving the overall performance.